All right, what's going on, family? I pray everybody's doing well. Welcome back to another straight up real talk with your boy JT. As we off top, give the Holy Spirit all the honor, the glory, and all def definitely all praise. Um, Generation Z, eighty three one. This is the video response back to you. Uh, don't let my title scare you. First of all, this is no disrespect to the younger generation. Uh, Things happen in every generation. It's just we see different ages, different stages. Um, you hear the term baby boomers, or you hear the term the greatest generation, which is those that was born between 1901 through 1924, which is a year after the 24, which is the 1925th. It's when my granddaddy was born. And they would consider them the silent generation when you was born between 1925 through 1945. But like I was saying, the baby boomers, 1946 through 1964. And then, of course, you got X, Y, and Z, right? And the X generation, born between 1965 through 1980. There are a lot of 80 babies on here. There are a lot of 70 babies on here. But then there's a lot of people that's 70 and up on here. And then you got your millennium of 1981 through 1996, or, you know, Generation Z. Some call that, we can say, from the years of 1995 to 2000. Or let's just say from 1995 to 2012. And then anybody after that, you know, 2013 and up to now, 2024 or 2025. So I know everybody on here is different ages, uh, different generations. And you wanted me to talk from a, a straight up real point about what is some of the issues that I see with this Generation Z. And of course, when you ask me, is there any hope? Yes. For faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. There's always hope. And when I'm doing videos like this, I'm not talking about all in the Generation Z is stuck in social media. Not everybody. But we got to admit, a lot are crazy about this technology. And when you think about it, most people in Generation Z that I know, they can't go a day without their phone. See, I was brought up in different times, man. Like I was just telling my wife, we came up with the record players. We played outside, you know. We love real communication versus nowadays, everything is a text message. Don't nobody I know hardly communicate. Um, in y'all generation, it's just the iPhones, man. Uh, and one thing that I, I hate to say it like this that I see that goes on in, in Generation X, also, I mean Z, is anxiety, stress, suicide. Because, see, y'all are born into the technology. I remember when I was coming up, we still had typewriters. We didn't have all this technology. We couldn't even dial 911. We had to dial that long number back then. For the weatherman, and, and, and uh, we was, I forgot that long number. It was a one eight hundred number we had to dial for the weatherman, and it was a long number you had to dial when you called the paramedic, fire department, and everything. But see, y'all are born into the digital world. I like to say, and that's why so many in, in Generation Z they go crazy behind technology because I was just telling my wife I was at the store earlier. This right here is a killer. What I see in Generation Z is the 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 work, man. Most of the youngsters now can't even work without doing this. Man was getting mad because the, I think he was, I forgot how old he was. He was at the register, man, and he just forgot about the customer. He was just sitting, I don't know if he was playing games on his phone. So the older guy had got mad and said, hey, are you going to help me or not? He said, oh, sorry, sir. 
and the texting and driving. That's another thing. But I noticed the stress level in Generation Z. And like I say, anxiety. And I never thought I would see the suicide rate go like it's gone. I know the way I'm talking, it seems like there is no hope, but there's always hope. But you got to be willing to change for yourself. See, the danger of this I, E Y E, phone, I got a regular Android, it's dangerous because it's. It's, it's so programming to the mindset that, like I say, most of y'all don't even know how to operate without it. See, when I was working back then, we, we of course, we had no cell phone. But even if we had a cell phone, we wouldn't have had time to be on it because we did hard labor, working in warehouses, standing on that hard, standing flat-footed all the time on that concrete, hard, uneven floor. Working in this hour with no air condition, hot, you sweating. You, you, I mean, you can't wait till your break comes. But see, now y'all work, y'all, y'all on the phone doing work. And I'm not talking about everybody. And then the loneliness of this generation, Z, is, is sad because I see more and more of y'all in Generation Z with mental illness. Like I say, stressed out, popping pills, can't, don't like when nobody tell you how to do something. See, one thing about us, when we was coming up, when the older generation told us something, they didn't care how we felt. But see, y'all are more concerned about what y'all friends think about you versus what's real. What do you even think about yourself? I never thought I would see in the Generation Z that so many, man, it's, you, you more worried about me, your friends. I see more care about their friends more than they care about themselves. And that's sad. Your trust level is in nine times out of ten in the generation Z. The ones that you trust, you can't trust them. Oh no. And it's like I was saying, when the older generation tell you something, you, you're mad, you don't want to accept it. See, we we had a lot. We had a lot of respect for our elders. Still do. Like I say, man, you 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 gotta realize we are living in some times now where parents are scared of their kids. Ain't no way they would have been like that when I was coming up. No. And one thing I noticed too about Generation Z, y'all are so worried about the future. Man, I just be trying to take it day by day, because the Bible teaches me. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow worry about itself. Each day got enough trouble of his own. But how many, how many of y'all in Generation Z read the Bible, study the Bible, live the Bible? See? And I understand, because when we was young, we did. Man, let, let me tell you something. That's why I say I hope, I hope this video don't, don't sound like it's just down in you. Because we got to realize we all was 20 years old. We all was 18. We all made mistakes. And some of you know you are making the same mistakes that your parents made. You're going to either live and learn from it or you're just going to be living and ain't learning nothing. You got to you gotta still get out here and live your life, make your mistakes, but you got to learn from them. Your parents can't live your life for you. And we can show you, tell you, Tell you stuff all the time. Me and my mama just had this conversation the other day. But we still got to get out here and make our own. How do you tell us growing up? You made that bed, lie in it. And I know you worried about the economy. And you ain't the only one in Generation Z. I was having a co uh, conversation the other day with a uh, young man in Generation Z. And he was talking about how scared he is for the future. But he was looking at the video I did on the Just Shall Live by Faith. How you going to have faith if you're tied up in this all the time? See, the technology becomes your God in so many ways. Like my wife was just telling me, uh, somebody somebody us uh, at her job, she knows what she's talking about. I lost their phone. I can't live without my phone. Because if I'm not mistaken, over there in Asia, I think it was Asia. They say they they spend six or more hours 
on their phone in Generation Z. That ain't just over in Asia. It's like that over here too. But if you can't see life without technology like that, yeah, you're in bad shape. You're in very bad shape. And uh, and, and that's why, this is why I've been so hard on when I keep saying stop letting this world system tell you what's wrong with your kids. This is why I've been so hard on this, oh, letting them diagnose your child with ADHD. Ain't nothing wrong with your child. The problem is the upbringing, the parenting, and this damn technology. That's what the problem is. Because you can't sit here and make me believe that boy got ADHD, but when he get on that iPhone or he get on that PlayStation 5 or whatever, and, and, and them notepads, he can work it like it ain't nothing, but he, oh, he, yeah, he saw his, his, his attention span. It's, it's, no, it's what we feed them. It's what we letting them program itself with. And then you got to ask yourself, the generations before, have we all done our job to the utmost to really teach our children? Just like now, I, I, I see so many parents, when their kids get on their nerve, you know what they do here? Get, leave me alone. Take my phone. Go in there and play. Get my phone. Or, or go in your room. Go go play your iPad. Get on your notepad. That's, hey, you know what that's doing? Because they get on your nerves so much, you don't care, but you don't realize you're sending them right into more and more programming. And it makes this Generation Z very lazy. See, we were already... 14 years old, we already had full-time jobs. 15 full-time. I think about cutting yards, 12 years old. See, the generation before, they knew about work. This generation now, man, Generation Z hardly want to work. I'm talking about, I ain't talking about everybody, but a lot of y'all do not want to work. But you want to have stuff. A lot of y'all want to beg your mama for everything. A lot of y'all do not want to be independent. You want to be dependent, which means you want to continue to depend on whoever taking care of you. I wasn't brought up like that. See, when I was brought up, you had an option. You're going to leave that house. You're going to get your job or you're going to go to school or you're going to the military. That's why most of us, we got we got so caught in working. That's all we know. And I look at the older generation. They work, 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 work. And most of them died and, and wasn't able to leave hardly nothing around. You thinking they was going to leave a will and most of them left you a want. You wanted that, but you're not going to get it. That's why I say each generation had their issues. But the, the technology that's thrown out in front of you is what's making it so hard for you to live. Just think about it. Everything is pretty much digital now. And the more and more they come out with stuff, the more and more lazy you get. Why should I do this? The machine can do it. <laughs> and one thing I'm going to point out again is communication. You rarely talk on the phone now. People text more than they talk. You see people all out in public when they're eating. Generation Z. Get out your phone. But like I say, I was brought up in a different time. I was brought up in a different time. And we had to really focus on life. We we really did. Y'all are distracted so hard by the technology, you know. And I see in this Generation X less and less motivation. Of, of course, not everybody, though. But see... You didn't have to really motivate us because we motivated ourselves. I say that all the time about working out. I never really needed a gym. I always say a lot of people that go to the gym paying for motivation because you want to, you want to charge me to do the same thing I could do in my house. And I mean that I love. I, I'm not saying don't go to the gym. I'm just saying with me, that's how I always looked at it, is it's, it's training and working out in my own backyard. Working out by myself. Or I've had a partner or some. Especially in my old house when I was down on Kenwell, man, and my grantee old house, man. We we opened up that garage though, man. We had to have nobody had to motivate us. They see the they see the working out. Four, five of us or more, we get in there, man. We we get to pumping. 
because we stayed out. Our mind wasn't tied up in this. And the video games and the gaming and, oh, man, the virtual world, a lot of y'all cannot come out of it. Man, I, I don't even know what else to say. Um, and then you see some of y'all feelings going to be hurt. I want to say your feelings get hurt so easy. And watch, I'm going to say this again. When them older folks talk to us, they talk to us crazy, we took it and we listened. We still might have made mistakes, but they told you the way they wanted to say it, how they wanted to say it, and they didn't care about your feelings. But see, a lot of y'all, y'all can't take that. Y'all feel different. And I ain't talking about all of y'all once again. So, um, and I know you're being, you're up under a lot of pressure and all that, but every generation went up under pressure. Uh, let me think about what I'm because I'm looking at your emails here. Uh, and see, I wanted to point this out while I'm reading the rest of your email. Okay, because when you look at this generation Z, this is the friend's generation never to know the world without the internet. Now, you got to really think about that. And then, as you say in your email, you say Generation Z is always worried about climate control, the weather. Yes. That's why I ain't never cared, man. I, see, me, I have learned to adapt with the weather because I work outside. So whether it's rain, sleet, or snow, whether it's, whether it's winter, spring, summer, fall, I'm out there in it. What I, have, what I learned to do was just dress for the occasion. That's why I stay prepared because I'm not going to complain about the weather. I'm outside, traffic control, cross guard, crossing kids. Whether it's 100 degrees or zero degrees, I mean it. And that's why I have bought everything I need to deal with the weather. But see, most of y'all in y'all generation, y'all don't want to invest in what's important, but you go and, you'll go invest in how much that video game costs. Or you want your mama to buy you this, buy you that if you're still at home. But if, if your mama tell you, son, take out the trash. If you're 18 or 19, you're still at home, 20, still at home. Take out the trash, cut the yard. You got a problem with it. See, and I'm going to make this point. <laughs> when I was coming up, we did not have options. It was either cut the grass, do your chores, wash dishes. Or get your ASS whooped. That's what that was the terms. That was the option. But see, generations now got options after options. We ate leftovers. You couldn't pick out what you was going to eat. We had to be in the house at a certain time. Our parents always knew where we were. Neighbors could neighbors used to look out for each other. The neighborhood, everybody would look out for each other. Them times is gone. And uh, a lot of y'all are very insecure, too, I want to say. But when you obsessed with technology, and thank you for the email, because I was just going to try to make this video about 20 minutes long. But when you obsessed with technology like that, it destroys your mindset. And that's why you operate the way you operate. And, and I always say a lot of times, really, can you blame Generation Z? Let me, let me, <laughs> let, let me go back. Let me, let me go back to this for a moment because it just hit me hard. The ones that was born before us. Okay, my mama gonna really love this because I just said earlier when you look at the, um, the you could call it the seven different generations. When you go back to my papa's time, like I say, my papa was born in 1925. So once again, from 1925 to 1945, that's what they call the silent generation. So it should make you wonder, what were they so silent on? But can you blame the baby boomers who was born from 1946 to 1964 if the silent generation didn't teach them right? Catch where I'm going with this. Now, the other one was called the greatest generation, which was born from 1901 to 1924. Now, can I blame what happened to my papa and them if the greatest generation from 1901 to 1924 
then teach the silent generation born from 1925 to 1945, which is where the baby boomers come in. Can I blame the baby boomers if the silent generation from 1925 to 1945 then teach them right? Can I blame Generation X, which is born from 1965 to 1980? Can I blame Generation X if the baby boomers didn't teach them right? Can I blame the millennium, who is 1981 to 1996? Can I blame them for what Generation X didn't teach them? Y'all see the pattern? The millenniums. 80s baby, 70. When you, when you when you look at the millennium from 1981, let's just say to 1996, that's what brings you up to Generation Z, born from 1997 to 2012. So can who can blame who if you wasn't taught right? And then anything out of 2012, you know it's straight up technology. That's what they call the Generation Alpha. Born if you born from 2013 to, to 2025. See, my oldest daughter is in a Generation Z because she was born in 05. You see my point? She was born in 05. So that's that young generation. And they, they, them cell phones got them. They got them. That's why I say they very, this generation is very stressed out. But, and I believe it's a scripture well, let me paraphrase in the Bible what Solomon was talking about. So, in other words, let me paraphrase this. How can you expect the next generation to get it right if the previous didn't get it right? What are we going to have our ongoing of history repeating itself? And that's why we still marching and we still protesting and how not things like Black Lives Matter, history repeats itself. And on that note, I leave you alone. Shalom.